Okay guys, I welcome you all to Engineers Academy. Do subscribe Engineers Academy if you haven't done it yet. We are going to solve this problem 1480 from Hebler Dynamics. And the problem says that when this S is equal to zero, the spring on the firing mechanism is unstretched. If the arm is pulled big such that S is equal to 100 mm, if this S is 100 mm, and if we convert this into meters, then 100 mm is 0.1 meters. We have to divide it by 1000. So if S is equal to 0.1 meters and then released, determine the speed of the 0.3 kg ball and the normal reaction of the circular trach on the ball when theta is 60 degrees. So when this theta is 60 degrees, we have to find the speed of the ball and the normal reaction of the circular trach on the ball. And it is said that assume all surfaces of contact to be smooth, neglect the mass of the spring and the size of the ball. So to solve this problem again, we can apply the law of conservation of energy. And let's say that when the ball is here, this is uh, state A or point A. And when it reaches here, when it covers an angle of 60 degrees, it is at point B. So if we apply the law of conservation of energy, the law of conservation of energy says that the kinetic energy at A plus the elastic potential energies at A, uh, plus the potential energies at A will be equal to the kinetic energy at B plus the potential energies at B. So the kinetic energy at point A is zero since the velocity is zero, it is at rest. And for gravitational potential energy, we have to define our datum line. So let's define my datum line here at the center of the arc. This is our datum here. Uh, the gravitational potential energy will be zero since the height is zero. This is the reference line for the gravitational potential energy. So at reference line, the gravitational potential energy is always zero. Now at A, the kinetic energy is zero. So I will write that Ta is zero. And then we have two kinds of uh, potential energies. One is the gravitational potential energy the gravitational potential energy at A plus the elastic potential energy at A and that will be equal to the kinetic energy at B. So the kinetic energy at B will be 1 divided by 2 mass times Vb. Let's say that the velocity at point B is Vb and the, pot the potential energies at B will be again that will be the gravitational potential energy at B plus the elastic potential energy at B. So we, we, we need to find the gravitational potential energy at A. So the gravitational potential energy at A will be equal to, the gravitational potential energy is always equal to W times H. And H is the distance, uh, the, uh, the vertical distance from the datum line. So this is our reference line. So when the ball is here, the H is the, equal to the radius. The h is equal to the radius and that will be considered as negative. So we can write that the weight is 0 0.3 mass times 9.81 and when the ball is here this is the distance from the datum which is the negative. On the upper side the, the height would be considered as positive and on the lower side on the bottom on this side the h will be considered as negative. So we have to write minus 1.5. So this is the gravitational potential energy at A. So 0 0.3 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by minus 1.5. So this means that this is minus 4.415. Minus 4.415. And this will be in Newton meters or we can say that this is joules since this is the energy. Now the elastic potential energy at A so the elastic potential energy at A will be equal to, since the elastic potential energy is always positive, the spring uh, force always does the positive work. So the elastic potential energy is always positive. That is 1 divided by 2 and mass, uh, sorry, 1 divided by 2 K. So K is uh, 1500. The elastic potential energy is always 1 divided by 2 K delta X. That is the change in length square. So now this, this is 1 divided by 2, k is 1500, 1500 and the change in length 
of the spring is 0 0.1. So that is 0 0.1 square. So this is 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 multiplied by 1500 multiplied by 0 0.1 square. This gives us 7.5 joule energy, positive energy. So now the gravitational potential energy at point B, the gravitational potential energy at point B, this will be again equal to W times H. And now at B, the ball is here. So the this will be the vertical distance of the ball from that datum line. This is now the H. So this H will be equal, to, if this is 60 degrees, then this is also 60 degrees. These two angles are alternate angles. So then if this is the radius is 1.5, then H is 1.5 cos of 60 degrees. So now we can write that this is, and this is again uh, the negative work done since uh, we are moving in the downward direction. And in the down, downward direction, this will be considered as negative from the datum line. So this is uh, weight is 0 0.3 into 9.81 into minus 1.5 cos of 60 degrees. So this gives us 0 0.3 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by minus 1.5 cos of 60. This gives us minus 2.207, minus 2.207 joules. And now the elastic potential energy at B, the elastic potential energy at B so when the ball is at B, it is in uh, no more contact with the spring. So the elastic potential energy at B is zero. So now we can put all these values in this equation. So this is our main equation. So the gravitational potential energy at A is minus 4.415. We have determined this. Then the elastic potential energy at A is plus 7.5. This is one divided by two, mass is 0 0.3 we b square so 0.3 divided by 2 this gives us 0 0.15 0 0.15 we b square and the gravitational potential energy at b is minus 2.207 and this is 0 so this is 0 so now from this we can find the velocity at b if i bring this to the other side of equation so that will be plus 2.207. So let's find this. This is 2.207 minus 4.415 plus 7.5. So this is 5.29. 5.292 equals to 0 0.15 VB square. And we can say that Vb, Vb square is 5.292 divided by 0 0.15. So 5.292, this answer divided by 0 0.15, this gives me Vb square equals to 35.28. So Vb square is 35.28. And if I take the square root, of my answer, so that will give me Vb, which is 5.939, or we can say that it is approximately 5.94. So Vb is 5.94 meter per second. So this is the velocity which was required. Now we are also required to determine the normal reaction when the ball is at B. So when the ball is at B, the surface will apply the force in the, in the radial direction. And let me uh, define the coordinate system. So, the, uh, so we will take the normal and tangential coordinate system. So this will be our normal direction. And in the direction of the increasing velocity, that will be our tangential direction. And the weight is going to act vertically downward which is the weight and weight is 0 0.3 0 0.3 times 9.81 and the normal is going to act in the 
towards the radius. This is our normal force of the surface. So now as we can see that uh, if this is 60, then this angle is also 60 degrees. And if this is 60 degrees, we can resolve this weight into its component. So we will have two components. We will have one component in this direction. This one will be the cos component and we will have one another component which will be acting in this direction. This one will be the sine component. So this, this component will be, this will be the 0 0.3 into 9.81. 0 0.3 into 9.81 this is 2.943 this is 2.943 so this component will be 2.943 cause of 60 degrees so now if we apply the kinetics and if we apply the summation of forces along the normal direction so that will be equal to m a n and we know that m a n is always equal to v square or v b square the velocity at point v is v b square divided by rho so now as we can see that this n is acting in the positive n direction so i will write plus n minus this component which is 2 point this is 2 point 2.943 cos of 60 and this is equal to this and the mass is 0 0.3 we b square is 35.28 divided by rho which is the radius of curvature the radius of curvature is the radius of the arc which is 1.5 so this is we can say if i if i bring this to the other side of equation so it will become positive and n will be equal to the sum of both of these so that n is 2.943 cos of 60 plus 0 0.3 into 35.28 divided by 1.5. So this is equal to 8.527 or we can say that n is equal to 8.528 newtons. So this is that normal force which, uh, which the surface is going to apply when the ball travels an angle of 60 degrees from this point A. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy if it helps in your learning.